Okay, I'm back. One more quick one. Um, let us go find that. Where did I put the elemental interaction? As the magic teacher, that's not right. Here? No, here? No, here? No. Quest system? No. Where in the hell did I put props? No. Item. Where is the arrows? Item name. Where did I put the status? Weapons. Elemental stuff. My goodness. All right. Here's the elemental types. So we need to create just a couple more things. But first, I'm going to update this. This is going to be water on mine. All right. So now I need to create two things. One is going to be another enumeration that will be status effects underscore e and this will basically lay out all the status effects that can be applied to enemies so I'm gonna just add a few so this first one is gonna be none just like they're plain and haven't been shot with any elemental type yet could call it benign if you wanted to or something like that uh, let's see this one will be burned wet or zapped why not now what we're going to do is we are going to create a blueprint interface and just get this in place. So this will be status effects underscore BPI. And we'll open that up. So the first one is going to be the fire effect, water effect, and shock effect. So the reason we're doing it this way is because we'll actually be able to apply this blueprint interface. You can use this for as many status types that you have that you need to interact with. Uh, let me just double check something real quick. Had elements? No. Magic system? No. Blueprints? Man, I do not remember where I put this crap most of the time. <laughs> Items, reward chest, item type, interact, no, fast. I'm sorry, bear with me for one second. Let me find it. Shopkeeper weapons, arrow types, magic system, spell types, but no. Okay, let's just find it. Status effects is in the the enemies folder because I'm an idiot. All right. So enemies, status effects. So here's where I got burn, wet, and shocked. And then status effects. Okay, yeah, yeah. I wasted all your time for nothing and I apologize. <laughs> so there's what we got right here. We'll compile that, save that, close that. That's all we need from that. Save that. That's all we need from that. All right, and let's set this guy on fire. So I'm gonna edit my training dummy because he reacts to arrows right now. And what we can do is we can go into our class settings and we can implement that status effects interface. We'll compile that and we'll add a variable over here that's called oop, status effect. This will be the one that he's currently under, and it'll be our status effects enumerator. So we'll compile that. So now we can get our event fire, event water, yeah, event water, and event shock. So we're only going to mess with the fire one for this time. But what we'll do is we will get our status effect because we want to see if it's equal to being wet at the moment. Because if they're wet, no, 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 that's what we do on this one. Never mind. Uh, well, this is how you would make it. Let me just show you. We'll set this one up on the water instead. So what we would do is 
status effect. If it's equal to being burned, that means they are currently on fire and there'd be a flame on the body. So if it is, we want to do one thing, and if it's not, we want to do another. Which really requires us doing the fire first because we're going to destroy something that's associated with the fire. So the first one, fire. So on the event fire, we're going to set our status effect to burned. Move this up. And then I'm going to spawn emitter attached. Now since we're doing this inside the training dummy's blueprint, we can actually attach it to the dummy itself. So attached to component will be the mesh. And I am going to use the KOI fireball effect. Then I'm going to promote this to a variable called inflame. So now on the event water, if the status effect for the character is burned, then we can find out if this is valid. So is valid, just as a safety precaution. And then if it is, then we'll destroy it. And if not, then we'll just do our regular thing, which is setting the status effect to wet. So we'll plug that in just like that. Compile that real quick. And now let's take a look. I don't think I've set up the actual, this is about to not work, but just to make sure that I'm, I am completely wrong. Okay, so what we need to do now is actually inside the arrow itself. I'll begin overlap. If it, if the actor has tag of enemy, then we need to. What did I do in the other one? Oh, fire, yeah, okay. I'm dumb. RPG tutorial series. So if the hit actor has that tag, then we want to drag this way up. Way up. And then we're just going to call our fire message. So I'll do this. Then we'll apply our damage. And then just for call our water message off the water arrow and then boom that should be all we need to do for that just to make sure it's all working appropriately we'll update the shop system to where you don't have to do that every time you buy arrows but for now let's see if I shoot you with fire he's on fire and if I shoot you with a water arrow, it snuffs it out. All right, so our elements are working for now. So what we can do further with these things is we can actually go full on in depth if when we get ready to do our enemy AI. So like they get set on fire and then they go into like a panic mode where they just run around and lose focus on attacking you. Uh, the water can be, I guess, like an ice water. <laughs> So it'll just kind of slow their movements. And then like if they're wet, when you shoot them with the shock arrow, it can actually do like a zap, like a radius damage and then stun the enemy that's actually hit. That'd be kind of cool. But yeah, we'll get into that further on. Uh, that will be it for this one. I'm going to save real quick. That's very important. Do this very often. This is your best friend right here. Love that button. So yeah, that's it. I will see y'all in the next one and we'll go a little bit further on that. So bye for now.